may he be a lead us go thank you holy spirit thank you father thank you jesus for being here your presence is felt here by each one of us help us to see you in every moment of our lives and very especially today as you gather all your children as a hen gathers its chick under its wings we are here lord to listen to your voice speak lord the servant is listening all this i make in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen yeah amen so amen today the topic that was given to me is about confession so something which you know this sacrament such a beautiful sacrament which is always you know put to the last or you know forgotten by many of our catholics itself and um this is one uh, sacrament which we need to understand and to glorify god for this beautiful sacrament of healing itself it's a, a sacrament of confession and uh, it's also a sacrament of healing um and so uh, we if we know the power of this beautiful sacrament we won't be running to hospitals and doctors we will get the healing when we do a sincere confession it could be sincere from our hearts and uh, the preparation of this confession how to prepare and all that you know we are taught in our catechism maybe most of us would have forgotten it because we uh, for convenience sake or whatever sake have uh, also forgotten about this sacrament to you know yeah, it started off with this uh, corona time especially where uh, the sacrament was not uh, given to us freely and so uh, people have become used to you know not going for confessions and um, lost the idea or the lost uh, the truth about this uh, wonderful sacrament and many are dead today dead in the spirit Uh, or rather sick in our heart sick in our minds because we have not used this beautiful sacrament of jesus substitute and so um, i would begin with a beautiful song uh, what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear and this beautiful song was sung by this author the who wrote this uh, he went through such a struggle in life a terrible time of uh, tragedies after tragedies he mentions about how he lost his mother and then um, you know every step of his life there was some some tragedy happening and finally it was um, his uh, fiance fiance who passed away and then after that um, another uh, girl who he was engaged to was to get married the next day and how she got drowned all these uh, tragedies instead of taking him away from god brought him closer and closer to god and then he wrote this beautiful poem of what a friend what a friend we have in jesus and that was a song as exactly when you are squeezed when you are pushed to the edge of the cliff that this song rose from his heart so you want the best car to come out of you come out from our each one of our hearts it will be the time that you are maximum tried in life persecuted or you know going through the, the biggest struggles and that is when you see the best coming out but we have to be focused on jesus as he did we have to know that he is god above all and a, a wonderful friend who loves us and cares for us and that is the song that i'm going to sing what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry 
everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. As we weak and heavy laden, but with the Lord of care, precious Savior, fill our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. To your friends despise, forsake you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we surrender each and every one of us, Lord, take us, Lord, into your loving arms right now and console all the hearts which are troubled right now. Comfort us, Lord, in your beautiful rest that you have called us right now as in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 you have called us come to me all who are heavily laden and I will give you rest yes Lord we have come to take rest though it is early morning many of us are carrying heavy crosses heavy burdens and when we look Lord what we need to do today, many things that we have to accomplish today, the household work, the job that we are taking up, the many things that we have to take care of, Lord, it gives us so much of fear or doubt whether we will be able to complete. But we have a wonderful friend in you, Jesus, a blessed savior who has promised us that you will bear all our, our burdens. May we ever bring everything to you, Lord, in an earnest prayer, so that we'll glorify and praise and glorify you. And we need to only understand that by praising you, an endless worship will be our sweet portion there. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, dear friends. So, as I begin about confession, we can take it, I have taken it from so many wonderful priests, just going through uh, even the catechism of the Catholic Church to understand every part of our, you know, walk, Christian Catholic walk, as a you know, believer and a follower of all the sacraments. And uh, there were wonderful priests like Father John, then from India, and then from Mike Smith from uh, US. Also the um, uh, 
the pre the bishop who passed away um shall what uh, what's his name um, ashin no uh, i have taken fulton from sheen. Uh, fulton sheen uh, yes yes so um, bishop fulton sheen yeah so these wonderful uh, uh, priests and bishops have given us so much to you know uh, understand and so i start off with you know uh, this uh, father who gave me father john so he says there are steps to make a good confession and he's given us some four points or five points about it acts of repentance he says starts off with act of examination of conscience so we have to first examine our conscience we, most of us or most of the time as little children we would have just uh, you know uh, by guided by our catechism teacher or our parents uh, we not made a proper examination of our conscience though they have told us to do it we would just uh, you know peer pressure we'll just go into the confessional and make our confession uh, you, the you know a usual way of you know signing ourselves and and repeating the same sins you know because we are so nervous when we come to the confessional but there are five steps he says about examination of conscience then act of repentance then act of resolution an act of confession an act of penance so before i go into all that may i make it very clear that you know the confession is for yourself ourselves each one each individual so every soul need to go and receive their um, abstinence and the blessing and also the penance individually we cannot do it for someone else our dear ones and i remember going for retreats and you know father uh, announcing several times that uh, you know people are coming and confessing the sins of their spouses or in-laws or whatever so um, very clear that we we need to go with our conscience you know uh, we have to prepare ourselves examine our conscience and what we need to confess what we need to uh, give up to the lord we do, do but we can pray for our loved ones we can pray that they make a good confession we can pray for them but this confession one to one you and jesus through the priest will have to open up your heart to him and your sins to him so starting off with mark 25 and before that confession is returning to jesus it's a beautiful occasion it's a beautiful celebration in heaven where one soul comes back you know over 100 even one god i mean the sh- the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after this one and when that one comes back it's a rejoicing it's a celebration in heaven so every time we go for confession this proper confession not the u- usual way of confessing just for the name sake and remembering only whatever you remember for that day we need to make a real conscious uh, um you know effort of uh a true uh, um you know true co- examination of conscience and bring it out to the lord and uh, so starting off with mark 25 shall i read me yeah mark 25 mark 15 mark 15 is it about the four hmm. friends uh, who brought the paralyzed to jesus is that uh, mark 1 okay please read it. Two five, wait, wait, wait. Two five, okay. Yeah, two five. When Jesus yeah. saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, "Your sins are forgiven." Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. So the four friends, what did they do? They brought them to Jesus. So you and I also, we can bring our spouses and our family or children and everyone to jesus through our prayers through our gentleness and uh, our way of living a, a true converted life that uh, they learn from us and then you see 
that you have brought them to Jesus. And like, like this, the four friends who brought, what did they bring? They brought a paralytic man. And uh, the first thing that Jesus looking at uh, the four friends, he saw this man and his first uh, thing that he uttered is, your sins are forgiven, isn't it? Your sins are forgiven. So only Jesus, only the son of God uh, could do this. Uh, forgiving the sins of man. And um, and uh, he knew, Jesus knew that it was the sins that brought about sickness and by a, a commanding or a cursing that spirit in him of unforgiveness or whatever uh, and uh, the, sin, the sins of uh, his uh, past uh, that has paralyzed him, God at the rebuke that first uh, and say that you're already forgiven. So that is uh, the essentials uh, that we need to pick up in confession. So anybody sick, anybody disturbed, uh, we need to do an examination of conscience and go and confess your sins. Don't look at the priest. Don't say, oh, that's a priest I'm not very comfortable with or uh, whatever. You pray, ask the Lord, how we need to make an examination of conscience. Let us not go judging the priest because it is not the priest who is sitting there. Even however he was or is or whatever, I don't know uh, that you have uh, judged him with. When you go there in the confessional, it is Jesus who is sitting there and speaking to the priest. That we have to first and foremost trust and believe and uh, be able to uh, do so. Then again, um, in 1 John 1 9, can you take it here? 1 John 1 9. Yeah. Praise you, Lord. Alleluia. If Alleluia. we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanses from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. Can you repeat that again? <clears throat> if we confess our sins, yeah. he who is faithful and just mm. will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. So he will, uh, um, he will cleanse us also of all our unrighteousness, isn't it? So... Um, uh, very, very, very powerful uh, uh, verse. This is if we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So, uh, uh, just take down all these verses, dear friend, because it's it, it's uh, very, very useful, helpful, and we can even guide others in uh, you know when uh, all the doubts arise. Then one John three five, uh, Jessica, one yeah. John. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in him there is no sin. John 20, 23. John 5 and 6, huh? 23, John, John 20, 20, 23, in 20, chapter 20, verses 23. Okay. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Amen. So if you forgive, this is uh, when Jesus appears to his disciples, um, where, uh, you know, when they were all afraid and sitting inside the room, no? That's when uh, uh, the first day of the week that the doors of the house where um, the disciples had met were locked. The doors were locked and they were in fear of the Jews. And that's when Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And after he said this, he, show, uh, he showed them his hands and his side and then the disciples uh, rejoiced and they saw that it was the Lord and they said again, he said again, peace be with you. And then 
this is what he says when he had said this and he breathed on him on them and said receive the holy spirit and and goes on to say if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them and if you retain the sins of any they are retained so it is jesus himself who uh, breathed on them and gave them the holy spirit and uh, told them gave them this uh, beautiful power gave them the power of forgiveness uh, confession okay and forgiveness so matthew 18 18 can we read that yeah please you know whatever you bind truly i tell you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will lose in heaven hallelujah so this was given to given by jesus to peter isn't it where he, when he openly uh, proclaimed that he was the messiah when he claimed that he is the messiah and jesus calling him uh, peter you are the rock and he says you the keys of the um those of heaven is given to you the keys of heaven is given to you and you have the right to um um bind on earth whatever you bind on earth and uh, is bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth so this is again uh, first uh, apostle that is given this power and authority so the apostles are uh, given the sacrament of confession and through the apostle it's given to the priest today handed over to them like how from jesus to the apostles and from the apostles it's handed over to the uh, you know bishops and priests and god and that's how this is the mind of god you know so what is prepared by the church and what is given in the gospel uh, we must receive uh, there is says that we must receive the sacrament the sacrament was instituted by jesus himself and uh, so um, we must see the sick forgiveness we should understand the true meaning of this and once you understand once we start you know um practicing this uh, sacrament we see the when you receive communion and our lives itself will become so alive uh, the meaning we meaningfully also start uh, receiving the body and blood of jesus so we all going and receiving without real uh, understanding without really confessing our sins we with all that um, dirt in us imagine we are receiving the body and blood of jesus receiving him into our hearts and uh, there's no honor there's no true uh, adoration there's no blessedness in us you know the five uh, steps as i told you uh, is the first one act of examination of conscience first we have to examine like what are the sins i have committed we have to find out what are the sins i have never even confessed maybe many times i have gone for confession but there are some sins which i am not you know really given up or told the priest because i am ashamed of it or i know the priest and what he think of it so if we have a chance to forget our sins Uh, like sometimes we are uh, forgetful also once once you go to the confessional you might even forget all the sins so we can always write down and uh, confess them to the priest i remember my nephew who went to the divine uh, divine retreat center and he came back so beautifully he takes time uh, you know before confession he used to sit down a uh, day before itself and keep on rem- remembering all the sins whatever he remember write it down in a diary and uh, or a piece of paper and that paper will be like you know a long list going on and on and on and he takes it with uh, so much of joy to the confessional half an hour to 45 minutes he takes and uh, gives out all the sins that he has written down so that's a very good practice to ask me um so Uh, in case we we are not able to you know uh, remember them it's always good to do this and um, we should not uh, we should only reveal all the sins to the priest and not try to hide it uh, because my confession becomes invalid and i cannot be actually forgiven even though i got my 
uh, absolution or whatever. Uh, I am only uh, like uh, half baked. I am not yet fully done. Nothing is fully given up. So um, it becomes invalid. So we have to remember when we did our last confession, we have to uh, examine our past confession, whether we were sincere, and even that we should bring out and tell the priest, I'm sorry uh, that I have, you know, even uh, not been sincere in my previous confession also. So in the past, if I confess and I did not repent, suppose there are some uh, sins that I have confessed, but there's no repentance, like, you know, there's no change. I have not repented at all. So maybe for these reasons, uh, you know, the, most of the kids, like, you know, they go out of peer pressure, going and confessing their sins, whatever comes in their mind, uh, now without preparation. So that should be, uh, you know, we should deal it, deal with that. If children, we have children, we need to sit across and speak to them, make them understand, help them out to write down and examine their conscience. So even if I have not forgiven somebody, like I'm, I'm, I have so much of hurt against someone, I just went and confessed my sins just for the sake of, you know, confessing, thinking that I can be uh, forgiven or I forget about it. But if I have uh, resentment, then again, I have not done justice. I have not done anything good. So like your David, you know, Psalm 51, 18, we have to have a contrite heart and a broken spirit. So that kind of a, uh, when you come into that uh, stage of real sorrow in your heart. You should have sorrow like how David did. So that is when you have a contrite heart and a broken spirit. Your heart should be broken, filled with sorrow, almost going to break. Like, you know, your heart is going to break with all your sins and you want to confess like, you know. So uh, just like uh, the prodigal son, I have sinned against my against God and my, against my father. That's how we should also uh, remember I've sinned against my brothers and sisters and my God. So my heart is filled with sorrow. And when you truly you are filled with sorrow, you may, that's when your, you know, your um, confession is so mature, you'll be able to uh, get everything out. Otherwise, you cannot be sorrowful and you cannot really feel sorry for yourself. So you, if you have a repentance, God will never forsake you. So let us prepare with the help of the Holy Spirit uh, before we uh, go in for this beautiful sacrament. Uh, Next, act of resolution. What is this act of resolution? Uh, the, for everything, whatever we do, we take our resolution. We will, you know, there are people who take resolutions uh, for the new year. Uh, when you have done something wrong, you want to make a resolution and never do that again or any addictions. So resolution, I will not repeat the sin again. That is what. This is what every one of us to take a resolution. Only when we take a resolution, uh, we will be reminded that we should not fall into it again. There, uh, jo John 8, 11. Um, Jessica, John 8, 11. The woman in adultery. What happens to us? Can you read that or should I? Uh, John 8, 11, the woman in adultery, she's caught uh, uh, committing that sin and they bring her to, her to Jesus to be stoned. And uh, we see Jesus will ask, um, tells the people, if you have no, let the one who has no sin stone her. And then what happens? Everybody drops uh, the stone and goes. And he looks at the woman and he asks, uh, what happens? Is anyone there? Anyone condemning you? Is the, did anyone condemn you? And she says, no. And he said to her, neither do I condemn you, but go and do, do not sin again. Do not sin again. So God never condemns us. But if we are coming to the Lord in confession, he says, go. Your sins are forgiven, just like this. Uh, the, that's what the priest also will, with absolution, he'll tell you, go. Your sins are forgiven and uh, do not sin again. So we need to make a resolution from our heart 
then God will give us the grace to take up that resolution. He will give us the grace to take it up. We cannot do it alone. But we have to tell the Lord that we want to make a resolution. John 5, 14. Uh, here again about the paralytic. That, um, 38 years, uh, the paralyzed man by the uh, sheep gate where he is lying. No? And uh, all the sick people, the lame, the um, blind and the lepers, everybody is there waiting for the water to be stirred and you know they believe that the angel is coming and that to heal them. So there Jesus um, confronts this person, this paralytic, and he says, see that, uh, you know, he comes to him and he asks him about, um, you know, whether he wants to be healed and how he gets a healing. And then he goes about not even bothered about uh, to know more about Jesus who healed him. He goes about and uh, where he, uh, Jesus confronts him again after a few days uh, by the temple and he warns him, see that you do not sin again. He, he calls him and tells him not to sin again. And that if you sin, what happens? Worse consequence will happen. So we have to be very watchful, very careful that uh, not to repeat our sins. You know, when we are forgiven, taking it for granted again, forgiven again, I can go. Uh, go back and do whatever I want. This is what the Protestants make fun of our Catholics. Okay, they will sin and they can keep going to confession. Uh, this is what is you know portrayed in movies also. Do one sin, go and confess, go back again to the same slush. No, we have to make a strong resolution not to repeat these sins again. And uh, then again comes act of confession. So uh, before that, we have to understand it is God who is in the center of our lives in confession. But uh, if we are sidelining him, now we're getting ready. we are sidelining him, then we will have problems. We have to make him the center of our lives. So it's not a priest who's sitting there, it is Jesus who's sitting there. 2 Corinthians 5.20 It says about uh, the priests that they are the ambassadors of Christ. Even we we are all representatives of Christ. But here we see in 2 Corinthians 5.20, uh, the priest is the ambassador of Christ. He's sitting there. It is Jesus. Uh, it is Jesus you are confessing to. So he is only a mouthpiece there and he's, uh, uh, Jesus is um, speaking through him and you know acting through him. So accepting the sins I have committed and taking responsibility of that sin is very important. So when, uh, when you go for confession beforehand, we have to accept, okay, I have done this sin. I offended my brother or uh, my spouse or my children or my in-laws. I've done it uh, knowingly, conscious, consciously I've done that sin. Uh, and then you take responsibility of that sin and go and uh, you have to go and uh, you know confess. Then comes act of penance. After confession, it's act of penance. Um, None of us can do penance for ourselves, isn't it? Because 1 Peter 2, 24. Please that be done. Pardon? Hello? Can you all hear me? Yes, Sushila. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. Sushila. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought somebody was speaking. Okay. So penance is the final one. So none of us can actually do penance for ourselves, isn't it? For all the dirty sins that we are committed, wretched we are, that little penance, what is that uh, that can really wash your sins? But <clears throat> 1 Peter 2 24, we hear that Jesus, he bore our sins on his body on the cross. So we have redemption and forgiveness. Yet we have to take up a small suffering year of penance. Jesus has borne it all in his body on the cross. But we, and he is, he is given us redemption and forgiveness. Yet, we have to take up a small suffering as a penance, huh? with the penance. The priest gives us a short penance, like, you know, say a three, uh, three Hail Mary or one Hail Mary or uh, 10 uh, glory beads. You know, he gives us such a small uh, thing for all the big sins that we have committed. So we don't want to be uh, disqualified. In 1 Corinthians 
chapter 9 verses 27 one corinthians chapter 9 verses 27 says i don't want to be disqualified saint paul is telling so i punish my body and enslave it under my control so it's not easy no uh, to control ourselves like uh, supposing it is gluttony there are people who cannot control they see any food they need to eat it we ourselves have seen that no so temptation the days we are fasting this so many delicious uh, food there we be so tempted to take just one and put it in our mouth when we are so hunger uh, the hunger rises in us but yes saint paul so beautifully says i don't want to be disqualified as a you know as a child of god and um, so i punish my body and enslave it under my control so that is a small penance uh, that whatever pun that small pen that's given is like a small punishment so that i can have control over myself a small suffering joined with the suffering with the suffering of jesus supposing i am suffering with um, some illness and uh, say back pain and uh, headaches and all that is coming into me ways uh, it up to the lord and say lord thank you for giving that little suffering that you went through so much more lord you went through back pain you went through headache you went this complete body was battered and you went through all the suffering for me to be redeemed let me join my suffering god with you the small suffering all the saints wonderful saints like francis of assisi alfonso and uh, uh, faustina all these wonderful saints they accepted their pain sufferings and struggles and uh, joined it with the suffering of jesus and they went through joyful suffering that's called joyful suffering um, you know that that acceptance of all their suffering for the sins that we are committed so um, the prodigal son had to take a u turn of repentance and reconciliation what i came to tell is when we pray for our dear ones our spouses and all that who are not going for confession just like this uh, prodigal son and the father who uh, yearned for his son to come back lost son to come back what did he do he was praying and waited with hope that we will one day come back with open arms how we received him jesus is also waiting for us and we need to pray like this father uh, and one day all these will take a u turn all who are praying for you are praying for will take a u turn and come back uh to the lord saying that i i have sinned lord i have sinned and i need your um, uh complete uh, forgiveness so what did this uh, the, i picked up from the uh, bishop of fulton fulton chain he says we are living in about the um you know a world that has denied guilt and sin and we are not just sinners but we are penitent everyone thinks that they are immaculately conceived the world thinks like that you know we are we have no sin there are people who say i am not a sinner i won't put me, myself in the category of sin there are so many who have uh, denied that they are sinners but we have to remember um that you know we are all sinners we cannot receive the mercy of god if we do not accept and recognize that we are sinners we have to repent and only then we can be forgiven it's not something that you know i sin i went for confession i got absolution i am forgiven no don't think we can fool god we might fool the priest also but the jesus who is sitting there in heaven knows our sins father uh, padre pio used to do that when uh, when people go queuing for confession some things they used to hide or you know they forget this beautiful holy one uh, yes, saint we used to uh, tell them about their past sins and remind them so nobody could escape uh, when they go to padre pio they even reminded or they uh, they be able to be pointed out so what has uh, so everyone uh, as i said today uh, the 
uh, people have denied guilt and sin and they have not accepted that there is sin. They don't even believe in heaven and hell and uh, truly don't believe in God himself. So here again, story of David and Bethsheba. Uh, sorry, uh, Bethsheba. We see uh, how David, such a good man, uh, a man after the heart of God, what happens when he's tempted, when he was doing nothing, you know, when all his men were in the, uh, in the field, uh, battlefield, what was he doing? Sitting and relaxing instead of being with them in the forefront. And that is when he gets tempted when he's in, the, in his terrace looking around joblessly. Uh, we have to be very careful that we are not left alone. We should always be in the presence of God. We should uh, always be, um, you know, with, our, uh, with the people who we are uh, to partake in whatever uh, responsibilities. Sin was approaching at his door. When he, he committed the sin of adultery, he thought nobody will know. And he just forgot the living God whose presence is always with him. And uh, what happens, you know, and uh, he had to be reminded. He also thought it's over and it's forgotten. And he had to be re reminded by Nathan, isn't it? And uh, the prophet who comes and gives him a story about, uh, you know, the uh, neighbor and lamb and all that and then he was reminded about his own sin and then he falls prostrate before the Lord crying and asking forgiveness we know all that and there is a consequence of all our sins if we are not forgiven, if we are not uh, taken up to confession dear friends, we might think okay we can push it back, I have confessed directly to God, all the excuses we can say but I'll tell you the consequence of our unforgiveness or the sin will haunt us and uh, that will bring a uh, lot of uh, trouble in us. The sickness that we are going through, uh, the, you know, the continuous uh, years together that we are going through some struggle and uh, some curse or the other is still in us, in our lives. is because of not going for a good confession uh, and uh, getting rid of that sin and making a resolution not to repeat and also uh, getting a complete forgiveness by our Lord. So, uh, ex uh, the, what uh, 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 this uh, father was telling was that there is excessive amusement today, excessive partying, excessive, you know, uh, pleasures of the world that has taken them away uh, in going for confession because sin is so much multiplied that uh, children or the youth or uh, people are not able to um, uh, understand how to go about this confession itself, how they can confess all these uh, sins. So, according to uh, Sheen, uh, the Bishop Sheen, he says, confession is nothing but nudity of our souls, revealing ourselves who we are. So we have to go with that intention and um, we are given up, uh, we give it all up in confession, the nudity has, in, because we are not going, you know, like open nudity as our soul no? and what he's saying is nudity as our soul going open and uh, revealing everything complete because that is not there this nudity has increased in the world in other ways uh, so that is how the devil plays, you know is always coming against God. We know about first Adam and Eve. They were naked, you know, from the beginning, how God created them. They were naked, but then they were not at all conscious of that. They were happy and walking around naked, isn't it? But after the fall, only we see they lost the grace of God and they were hiding in shame. So the God had to cover them up, you know, uh, made of skin, clothes made of skin. So confession is... Um, like uh, coming nude, nude of us, nudity of our soul. That's what I mean. Saying that I am a miserable sinner. And when we come saying that we are miserable sinners, what happens is um, we see how Jesus takes control, forgives our sins, and makes us whole again. And uh, there's a small uh, story, uh, you know, I read about 
uh, a little child, I mean, a young child going uh, for confession. So the um, uh, catechism teacher was teaching him, saying, see, when you, whenever you sin, uh, what you should do is, he, she gives him a board and she gives him some nails and tells him, each time you sin, for each sin, you nail a, uh, nail it to in on this board. Okay, so you know that's a sin. And uh, say, for example, if it is against your mother, you are disobeying your mother. So you nail it on that board, that one sin. And when your mother forgives, you remove that uh, nail. Again, when you sin uh, against her, you you'll be piercing another nail like that. There might be many nails at the end of the month or the end of the week, which you have to you understand that you know you have sinned. You remove, you put, you remove, and when you remove, what happens? You see a lot of holes in it, isn't it? Of course, the nail is removed. You're forgiven, but there's a big hole. Uh, so what uh, you have to fill up that hole, isn't it? So that is where we go for confession. Otherwise, the the uh, that hole is the effect of that sin in us, that hole. So we have to fill it up uh, with a reparation of our sins. We have to give penance during the conf- the penance which is given. We go for um, uh, confession. We are we receive a penance and we <clears throat> that is a reparation for our sins. So we have to uh, take the blessings, mercy of God uh, and uh, God who blesses us during confession. Uh, he, uh, we receive his mercy and grace that we are completely cleansed of our sins and we go back happily. Uh, sin ends uh, ends uh, ends us from God. It, it takes it takes us away from God. Sin is of two kinds, we know, mortal and venial. All that when we <clears throat> when we have time, we should go into this. Uh, you know uh, about uh, our catechism, what we did. We come to understand properly the mortal sin and venial sin and all that. Even doing, uh, fun, look that if you have skipped Sunday mass, remember that is a grievous sin. Okay, today it is taken casually. I don't go one Sunday; it's okay. Or uh, uh, we are busy with some uh, business, or the children have something to study for the next exam for the next day, and so you skip the mass. Or you think, okay, I'll do the mass after my whatever I gone through next day or Tuesday or Monday or whatever. All that we should not, you know, uh, do because it is God Himself who has instituted this Sunday mass. That is, it's an obligation. Uh, it is a Sabbath. Where God took rest. You know, six days He He had worked. He had creation. He had the creation. And then we see he took rest, and that is a day of rest for our souls too. We need to rest with God. We have to put off everything else and give importance for that Sunday. We have to, uh, you know, make that important to our families too. Don't think it is just like that. Us um, can be, you know, excluded or looked uh, off. It is a sin. It is a sin. We need to. Um, we need to. Uh, Correct ourselves and go for the confession, saying that we have not, we have missed the sun, Sunday mass too. According to um, a wonderful priest called Mike, uh, uh, he he was talking about uh, confession is a place of victory. He says it's the most joyful, humbling, and inspiring place in the world. How beautiful it is! No, can have we all thought of that? That it's a place of victory, and that it's joyful and humbling and inspiring place of, in the world. I have not thought about it before. After I heard from uh, this wonderful priest, I was really contemplating on it. He says, "I see the costly mercy of God in action there. Costly mercy of God. Many who go through their entire lives, they have never encountered the reality of God's love." That He gave to us on the cross, isn't it? We have not realized that. The confession, He say, says, uh, when He is in that confessional, He says, "I see people, those who are discouraged, lifted up; those who are, uh, you know, people who are wounded, sick, and wounded, they are healed." Then He says, "I have seen people who have lost; those who are lost, who have, uh, you know, feel found, and uh, every single day." 
he says this. He is so happy with this confession uh, to do um, this, um, uh, to sit at the confessional and not because he wants to see the dirt in us, but to see us all uh, set free and redeemed. Then he says, I see someone um, who's not uh, giving up. When he sees people coming for confession, he's so happy because he sees people are not giving up. They come and they visit the confessional very often also. So, uh, uh, so uh, encountering uh, this inspiring, uh, you know, sacrament, it's not a place of discouragement, but it's a, it's a place where, you know, you are set free and you come there and you give up uh, everything to the Lord and and uh, it's a place of victory, it says, when you come and give up the, that sin to the Lord, the sins to the Lord, it become, you, you are victorious. You're not a loser to come and tell your sins and all that. It's not, and some people consider that as being a loser, you know, because of ego and pride that one doesn't want to go for confession. There was an elderly person in my prayer group who came in, uh, my friend's father. And... Um, He's so pious, he's so humble, everything is, I mean, not humble, he's so pious. So when he told me, why should we go and confess our sin to a human being, a beast, and I'm not very comfortable with him, he is also a sinful man, he said that, oh, why should I? So I, I realized that it was, but then he said, why, why am I feeling that way? So I told him, uncle, I'm sorry to tell you, you have a lot of pride in you. So, you know, sometimes we have to confront such people and be able to help them out also. And after that, he really realized that, you know, the pride is keeping him away from confession. He was about 75 years old. And today, uh, he makes it a habit of going regularly for confession and he's feeling so free and happy. And he knows that's a place of victory uh, that he's also found. So... We are all God's masterpiece. Uh, but sin is not. Uh, the sins are like garbage in us. And uh, if uh, sins are garbage, priests are like uh, basically garbage men, isn't it? They are like, they are only taking our last garbage. So I remember the last time, uh, um, you know, when I saw a garbage men collecting the garbage, uh, it was fascinating. Uh, it fascinated, uh, you know, me when I saw how he is collecting all these uh, things. We are, we feel so sick about it, but he doesn't show any sort of, uh, you know, that he's uh, repulsed by the garbage that he's picking and all that. We close our nose and everything. He just comes casually, takes it and puts it in this uh, vehicle or whatever. And uh, exactly the same with the priest, you know. They are fascinated when we go and dump all our sins uh, onto him. It's Jesus who's accepting that, okay? So when someone comes for the confession, the, the priest remembers, uh, he won't remember, after that he won't remember the garbage anymore because it's not remembered, isn't it? What all sins you have uh, given. Can the garbage man open the bag and keep uh, looking what all sins, what all dirt is there? No. Same with the priest. He'll forget. He remembers that God loves all the people who he sends to the confessional. And he sees the people as how God sees. And he sees them as people who don't want to give up. And um, they come with their heart and their soul, uh, you know, with a conscience of giving up everything. And then uh, uh, the priest is absolutely humbled when he hears uh, the confession of a true repentant and he's able to um, you know give that solution also with joy it's really amazing and uh, it's a humbling uh, experience for these uh, priests actually uh, when they see that one goes with complete repentance father mike was saying that when he was ordained uh, ordained first how uh, you know his father threw a, a um, Party and his, fa his father was a surgeon from the from the beginning and a very uh, what do you call it? He was very successful surgeon. He got up one uh, in the in that particular party that he threw. He got up and he gave a speech saying, "You know, I am being a doctor. I have saved many lives. 
healed uh, many bodies all that he went on but then he says but my son michael uh, with his hands he will save lives he will heal bodies and heal souls and he said i believe my son will save more lives than i have that is what the priest is doing today dear friends let us recognize that so in confession the priest offers mm, is the real love of god real mercy of god so in fact when someone comes for confession uh, uh, the it's a life changing and reassuring power of jesus given to them uh, to us so that reveals the the, the heart of priest also no? they come not only that uh, when they come for confession i heard that they also do a lot of fasting and you know for our all our sins you know god that they have taken up and they pray for us they give us a small uh, penance only you know they saying the uh, three hail mary or whatever but they later on go and pray for us all our sins and even fast go up to fasting so um, uh so this is all about uh, confession because i can go on and on but we do not have much time i hope uh, whatever i have spoken has covered a lot of our confusions and help us also in making good confession um so every priest that comes for confession uh, uh e too will do penance okay and uh, confession is a beautiful sacrament and let us make use of it this is given not only for catholics not in any other religion or uh, denominations so uh, one of uh, what father was saying that one of the reasons why confession is uh, Uh, so joyful and humbling and inspiring uh, thing on the place of the world is this um, that we are completely made whole you know when we go there and completely he forgives us so he was saying i'm so grateful to the lord that he has called me to be a priest so i can be a part of the sacrament because it's where it's a year that god wins his children back it's a place where god brings god he, he wins his children back and through these priests in confession um so it's a place of victory so he says i don't care if it is the first time a person is uh, coming and giving us a confession or if it is a 100 times or 1000 times that he has confessed the same sin again and again particular sin every time they go for confession it's a win for jesus so as a priest he says i sit there i get to watch i get to see god winning his children back every single day that's how we ended up is um, you know message and it's so, so inspiring for me to uh, take up this topic and i hope all of you enjoyed uh, the session and um, you know we have everything again in catechism in the catholic chat if you have doubts and and of course in the uh, when we make that confession next time uh, remember all the four point five points that i gave you all uh, uh, again if you want i can brush up with that that is um, we have to make the act of examination of conscience then we we have to have, have the act of repentance the third is act of resolution the fourth is act of confession and act of fifth one is act of penance um uh, there are many uh, who think you know <clears throat> abortions are not uh, part of the sin or all that if uh, some uh, people have aborted and if they have not gone for confession they are suffering they they are mentally suffering or there are some psychological uh, suffering that they are undergoing nobody can be set free if we have not understood the intensity of our sin and not gone for confession it's like blood in your hands it's a murder isn't it but if we have gone for a confession and to see the absolution and penance and all that uh, we are free again because god forgives us and he's already taken every sin of us as on the cross but we need to go and make the confession we need to do the u turn we need to convert uh, uh, have a, a contrite heart and you know a broken spirit before him uh if not i have heard of many people who have not gone for a proper confession where the husband and wife have to do not just the mother 
uh, because both are involved. And if you don't do it, it uh, you might think you nobody knows or no nothing will happen. Maybe you will escape, but it will follow up with the children, and the generation after generation, four generations will be affected in some way or the other. Could be like they have become barren, or they have marital marital problems, or something that that is affecting uh, you know, even a child bearing, and or if they have some pro problematic uh, babies. Uh, in some way or the other sick or, or some way uh, some defect so there are some curses because of that not that god is cursed us. it is the devil who has put us into that and so we need to come out of all our um, guilt and sin and a place a confessional a place of victory and um, um, a place where god gives gives us all back okay it's a beautiful place in the whole world. So God bless you all and praise God for this uh, wonderful day. I thank God that he helped us, assisted me in uh, bringing out the truth about confession and the power of confession and how we need to completely get washed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sisila. Thank you.